all you who might be interested in ever opening up your Sea Hunter if it's been around for a long time and what the heck. I used a Dremel tool and you know once it was once this piece was on the Dremel at high speed, I just went around the outline uh, of the cover and took away that part which overlapped this. Once I had cleared that, this cover pulled out real easy with the exception what you have to do is in the battery case there are three screws two hold just the battery springs in place you don't need to move those out um, <clears throat> you know what you gotta take that screw out that goes right into here and once you get that screw out this thing pulls out easy Okay, so I took my uh, Sea Hunter apart uh, because, you know, I kind of uh, individualized it, uh, painted the thing black, and I wanted it to be more inconspicuous, not that bright yellow. I thought I had some water intrusion because I could smack this thing on the housing and it would clear like a steady overly uh, <coughs> the wrong it was just getting arbitrary uh, signals until I'd smack it hard and then all of a sudden it would go away I couldn't figure that out I thought okay that's water well, as it turns out, this capacitor here is loose. Well, it broke off. I don't know when, but it broke off right from there. This mount right here. So I'm going to have to use a discrete component and solder it to here. I can't do surface mount soldering. But this is very repairable right here. Um, once I get that repaired, then th this housing, of course, it'll slip right back into here. The entire housing slips in with these O-rings really nicely greased. And then I'm going to use epoxy. I'm just going to build a, uh, you know, tape bridge. And, uh, and with this all clean, it'll reconstitute the epoxy that was there before. Uh, basically, we don't want the unit to... We don't want this face to collapse into here. Now, what will hold it back is, to some degree, this, but I really don't want... That is, per design, part of what holds it from collapsing in, but also previously the lip. You can see this is a fairly thick plastic housing. So this is a look inside the, the Sea Hunter. There's of course the, the intelligence on board. The rest is just circuitry. I'm kind of curious what that is. Okay, so I'll show results later. Okay, <clears throat> completed the repair, uh, soldered this in place, I used the alternate holes, this is where the component was actually broken out, but there's a wire there, there's a board run parallel to it there, and parallel to it there, and there were these board through holes, so they naturally worked for a through hole mounted component which I used. Uh, it's 10 microfarad, 24 volt, uh, 25 volts. So it's a little better capacity which doesn't change anything as far as how this 
is going to work, but hopefully whatever I reattached is going to make the entire metal detector work better. There was obviously a reason uh, Garrett had that in there, and it broke off. Uh, again, here's the original one, but that's surface mount technology, and again, I can't do that. So I don't, I unplugged this for in order to repair. Now my problem remains is pressure at this point will be held back only by the lip on this side and that side as I had ground away these lips and uh, what I want to do is fill it in with epoxy and so now it's time to study the strength of epoxy to see if I need to downgrade the depth to which I can dive this unit. I'm certain that it'll go to 20 feet. I don't know if I can go to 200 feet.